good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Blacktown Business Success Program. Our webinar today is after the stimulus stops. And there's no doubt this year has been a year full of surprises. A lot of unexpected things have come the way of business. And we've been talking about over the series of webinars, really how do we help your business through this? And, and there's been a little bit of concern about what happened after uh, the initial round of stimulus packages ends in September. I just wanted to really build on the presentations that we've done up until now and also give you some information on support packages that are out there to support you as business owners in your challenging times. Uh, joining me today is Anthony De Cruz from Service be talking about some of the new initiatives that Service New South Wales have rolled out. The Blacktown Business Success Program is an initiative of Blacktown City Council partnership with CGU Insurance. So if you get value from today, we'd very much appreciate if uh, you'd be willing to share it on social media using the hashtag SP. And also everyone who's registered for today will also be getting link. Good afternoon, everyone. And I'm the manager at Blacktown Council responsible for the business success program and uh, working with Jeremy to provide these webinars. I'd like to thank Anthony DeGruz from Service New South Wales, Graham Fitzpatrick from Business Connect today particularly, and all the participants. I'll get out of the way and I hope that you benefit um, in this difficult time from uh, the uh, information provided today. So thank you very much again. Brilliant. Thanks so much, Ross. The, uh, we'd also like to thank CGU Insurance for stepping up to <laughs> the Blacktown Business Success program. It's through their sponsorship that this is uh, possible. And this is part of their initiative in building stronger, safer and more resilient communities. Now, one of the things in small business is to make sure that we manage our risks. And it's important that we have the right level of risk protection in place. So if you're interested in finding out more about the different risk protection products from CGU, at the conclusion of today's webinar, you'll receive a feedback link. And there's a little box you can check there. And if you check that box, someone will be in contact to give you a quote uh, for insurance. We very much appreciate your feedback on these webinars. And those people who do complete the feedback survey will also receive a soft copy of the presentation slides. So don't worry if you can't write it all down fast enough. A copy of the slides is available at the conclusion of today. So what I wanted to do was to take a little bit of time to bring you up to date with some of the impacts that we've seen with COVID-19 and how it's affected small business. Really talk to you about the importance of updating your business plan. And we're going to have a look at some of the new small business support initiatives being rolled out by Service New South Wales. He'll talk a little bit, Anthony will talk a little bit about the Business Concierge Service, some of the business support grants that are currently available, uh, some of the government fees waivers that are available, and some of the other concessions that are available. We'll also uh, have an introduction to Business Connect and open up to questions and answers at the end of today. So I got this uh, snapshot off the Reserve Bank of Australia to look at a comparison between what's happened in the Australian economy between uh, the December quarter last year and the June quarter. And we've seen the borrowing rate drop further to 0.25%, really historical low levels. And some, some think this is great, but really for an economy, it's not a, not a good sign when you need to do this. It's government and the Reserve Bank getting behind and giving people real interest in keeping their money moving and putting it into productive investments. We've noticed GDP drop off and the inflation rate has uh, dropped in March to 2.2%. And uh, right now, the, the June figures were just released and inflation has gone down to 1.9%. Now, this was primarily because uh, we've uh, seen that uh, childcare was, was rolled out for free. Petrol prices crashed through the floor, as we saw a few months ago. If we were to remove those from the equation, CPI would have risen about 0.1 of a percent. Some of the other things we've seen is that rents have dropped 1.5% in June quarter. So there's not as much demand for both residential and commercial real estate. 
And the unemployment rate, so you can see the figure there in May was 7.1%. Uh, at the moment, they're saying, you know, when we take into account job keeper, keeper that figure is about 10%, and it's likely to climb to 12, 13, or some say even 15% as the stimulus gets rolled back. Um, so again, employment growth is, is not great. So this is why the government's been so proactive in rolling out support measures to support small business because they recognise that really small business is the engine room of the Australian economy. Looking at um, a few industry figures on how COVID has really impacted uh, small business. So 73% of Australian businesses have accessed support measures. We can see that some 55% accessed wage subsidies, 19% uh, have uh, put new rent or lease arrangements into place and almost 16% have taken advantage of deferred loan repayments. And when we're dealing with unprecedented times, it's really important that we're somewhat conservative in our approach. And as we've talked about in previous webinars, really making sure that we're carrying adequate cash reserves, because you know we expect the best, but we plan for the worst. And as we've just seen in Melbourne, you know, no one down there was expecting to go into another six weeks of lockdown. So there's some businesses down there that are going to be very highly challenged over the coming months. Although people are saving time, not driving to work, people, the people who are still working uh, are working on average three hours longer a day. Um, so productivity levels in business have had to go up. And working from home has really changed people's mindsets around it used to be the expected thing was everyone went and sat in an office together. Uh, but we've seen that now people have got over some of the technology hurdles of, uh, of being able to use remote teleconferencing and WebEx. There's no longer such a need to go and see people face to face all the time. So I think one of the trends that we're all going to get used to is a lot more of these online meetings, which is positive in a way in terms of they can be a lot more efficient if, um, if they're used in the right way. So if you listen to the mainstream news, you definitely couldn't be blamed for feeling pretty down. And you know the reason for that is you've got to understand the mainstream news is all about giving you the bad news headlines. And there's only so much of that we can take. As business owners, it's really important that we also choose who we listen to. And one of my favorite sayings is, there's no such thing as an unresourceful person, there's only unresourceful states. And the thing that happens in businesses, you know, when we get a few setbacks, it's very easy to get into an unresourceful state. But what we've got to do is to just stay focused on what our goals and outcomes are. And I wanted to spend a couple of minutes on really the importance of why now is a great time to get back in and update your business plan. Now, really with a business plan, this is a live document. It's not just something that you put together before you start your business. This is something that really ought to be updated every 12 to 24 months. And it gives you the overview of number one, why has this business been started? What's the fundamental problem that the business is there to solve? Uh, where we want the business to end up? Remember a business is just a vehicle. It's designed to take you from where you're at to where you want to be and provide you with a balance of both cash flow and lifestyle. And hopefully down the track, you've built it into an asset that is something that you can sell for a significant lump sum that'll uh, be great to put towards a happy and healthy retirement. A business, of course, you know, once again, if it's just you, it's not so much a business, it's a job. So if we want to build a business that is an entity that works without you, we need to focus on who we're going to put around us. What are the team members that we're going to get us to help us along the way? It's going to document the strategies step by step of specifically what we need to do to get there and when things are going to happen. So when we move into the business planning mode, it's not so much about thinking about right now, it's thinking about what we want to be. And more importantly, what's the most efficient way to get there? One of the workshops as part of the business success program is all about business planning. And we delve into this into a little bit more detail. And again, if you complete the feedback survey uh, from the workshop today, I'm also going to send you a template for a business plan. 
The best way to create a business plan is to look at one that someone else has done and get some ideas from there. Now, people often ask, how big a business plan do I need? And, you know, the best response to that is, well, how big a business are you planning on building? And there's a lot of value in drilling into details, but at the end of the day, my belief is every business plan ought to be able to be taken back to one or two pages summary. And that is, it's a live document that we look at regularly. And we may have sections within the plan that we go into a lot more detail, but it's really allowing us to get our mindset straight, to know ahead of time what our expected outcomes are, what are some of the obstacles that may arise, how we're going to address them, and really allow us to be a lot more proactive in growing our business rather than reactive, responding to the challenges that come up. The great thing with business planning is it gives us more time for critical thinking, to really look at different alternate strategies. There's no one single recipe on how to build a great business. And you know, in life and in business, you either win or you learn. So when we take time to sit down and plan, it's important we also look back at what's happened over the last six, 12 or 18 months in our business. Look at the strategies that have really helped us the most and ask ourselves, how do we do more of that? And look at the things in our business that haven't worked and say, well, how do we stop doing that? So business planning also allows us to have some accountability. So 12 months later, we can sit down and we can say, well, that was the plan. How did we do? And more importantly, what can we learn from this? To build a great business, you don't want a business that grows 50% one year and 0% the next year. The best businesses are the ones that are consistent, growing at 5, 10, 15, or even 20% year after year. You see, when you build an organization and you can demonstrate that consistent growth, this is where your valuations significantly improve. The process of planning and replanning also allows you to make the decision. How much time, effort, and money am I willing to continue to sink into this venture? You know, we all hear about the overnight business success, but in reality, the overnight business success comes after five to seven years hard work, where instead of taking a big fat salary out of the business, you're taking enough to survive and you continue to invest that money back in the business to help it grow. Planning also helps us to reduce risk and uh, you know, there's many businesses that survive on this drug called hopium. That is, people just hope things will get better. And one of the biggest challenges that all of us face in business is this four inches between our temples. And our mind makes all sorts of generalizations and distortions. And the thing that planning forces us to do is to get a lot more objective, to look at the facts, to look at the reality, to set realistic goals, and to get clear on the strategies that will help us to get there. Now, I guarantee if we really rewind 12 months, not 1% of all the business plans in Australia had a COVID-19 section in there. What, what's going to happen if we shut down all international travel? You know, this was just something that came as a blindside uh, for many, many businesses. Nevertheless, one of the things to understand is that business has seasons, just like the weather. So right now we're in winter, after winter always comes spring, then we get summer. And the challenge for many business owners is that when things are going great, that is when it's summer, people think it's always gonna stay that way. But sure as um, night follows day, winter will follow summer. And this is why it's important in your business when things are going well, that we continue to build reserves. And my suggestion for any small business out there is to make sure that you have reserves of at least three months cash flow. So if not $1 came in the door for the next three months, you could still pay all your expenses. That gives you a much greater level of risk protection. Um, when we have the right plan, it also allows us to understand how much capital we need for our business. You know, and there's some business owners who say, Jeremy, help me grow my business 50 or 100% in the next 12 months. And I say, great, how much cash do you have? One of the things to understand is growing a business quickly consumes a lot of cash. It gets tied up in debtors, it gets tied up in salaries. 
So what's really important is that we make sure that we have a plan to manage our cash flow within the business. Now, if you haven't done one of these before, this is a great tool for you to roll out. And this is what's called a SWOT analysis. And the best businesses know what they're really, really good at. They know where their strengths lie and they look to use those strengths as often as possible. They don't attempt to be all things to all people. So internally in our business, we've got some strengths and we've got some weaknesses. Where we need to be spending our time is 80% on our strengths and continuing to develop those, and 20% of our time on mitigating our weaknesses. We shouldn't ignore them because the weakest link in the chain can lead to failure. And then we look externally. So we say, well, what are some of the opportunities that are coming up that we can take advantage of? And also, what are some of the threats that could potentially um, threaten our ability to do business? And again, where we can, we want to use our strengths to capitalize on the opportunities and also to mitigate some of the threats. So this is a very powerful tool that we use after we set our goals in our business to then look at, well, what are the strategies that we're going to put into place to help us get from where we're at to where we want to be as quickly as possible. It's very easy to criticize government and um, However, criticism doesn't get us very far. What I've got to say is that I was very impressed by how fast both the federal and state governments acted with the COVID-19 crisis when things hit in terms of rolling out a whole suite of support initiatives um, for small business. Some people will say they went too far. Some people will say they didn't go far enough. But on the whole, I think most business owners would agree that it gave them that little boost to help things through and it helped the majority of businesses. There are some that have definitely fallen through the cracks, but the challenge is when we're making decisions on this scale, it's very, very difficult to make sure you catch every single one. So I wanted to talk a little bit about JobKeeper part two that's just been announced. And uh, for basically post September 27th, which is the first round of JobKeeper, JobKeeper part two comes into um, existence. And in order to qualify for this, you need to show that your turnover has been reduced by more than 30% relative to the June and September quarters last year. So this means if your business has been affected by COVID and continues to be affected by COVID, then again, you can now get this part two of the JobKeeper subsidy. However, the amount has fallen to $1,200 per fortnight um, for eligible employees who are working at least 20 hours or more a week and it's been reduced to $750 a fortnight for part-time employees working less than 20 hours a week. So there's more information um, on that on the Treasury website, the link is at the bottom. And again this scales back in January so the payment rates will drop to either $1,000 or $650 a fortnight. Part of the first round of um, legislation changes that have been rolled out was providing some relief for financially distressed businesses. And so there's been an increase in the threshold in which creditors can issue statutory demands for debts to be paid, um, an increase in the threshold to initiate bankruptcy proceedings, uh, some temporary relief for directors from personal liability for trading while insolvent. So, now more than ever, it's really important that you keep a close eye on your financials. And for any of you who are on the call today who feel like you don't really fully understand your financials, we have a great workshop as part of the Business Success Program. So we do a full three hours all about understanding all of the elements of your financials, your balance sheet, your profit and loss, your cash flow statement. And it's important that you also work with your accountant to make sure you stay on top of things so that you have that visibility of what's happening to the cash flow in your business. The number one reason why businesses fail is they run out of cash. Uh, another recent announcement is uh, some $3,000 SME recovery grants. So if you have fewer than 20 uh, full-time equivalent staff, uh, then at the moment there's, you can apply for a recovery grant of between $500 and $3,000 
to cover the costs for things including making changes to your fit out to make it safer, uh, to provide staff training or counselling, to assist in advertising and communication expenses, and for purchasing cleaning products and services. So if you're interested in receiving this grant, uh, the applications are only open till midnight on Sunday the 16th of August. So that's another one to get onto pretty quickly. Once again, if someone's willing to put their hand out and assist your business, you may as well accept that help while it's there. It's better to have it and not need it than to not have it and to need it. Uh, we've also seen that the government stepped up to help guarantee uh, for small businesses wanting to borrow, um, borrow funds to either help to subsidise the growth of their operations or to purchase new equipment. Um, so this was for businesses under $50 million and there was the option also to take a six month repayment holiday. So I know a number of organisations that have spoken to their banks and the banks aren't, aren't just coming with an open checkbook. You've still got to show them a business plan. You need to make a business case as to how that money would be used. Um, but it's been so far from what I've seen as the banks have been very willing to have those conversations. And I know a number of organisations that have been able to access that funding. One of the other initiatives that um, came out was the ability to get early access to super. So this is also available um, for this financial year. And there's the opportunity to pull $10,000 from your superannuation if you're in cash flow difficulties, if you're a sole trader or have been made redundant. Again, when we look at the share market, probably now is the worst time to actually take money out of your superannuation. However, this may be a potential option if you're really struggling and need that support. So I wanted to now pass across to Anthony de Cruz, who's the Regional Engagement at Service New South Wales. And um, Service New South Wales is a government organisation that I really admire. They've so transformed over the last five years. I'll never forget the day that I walked into my local RTA, you know, ready for the bulletproof counters and the screens and the the, uh, you know, the us and them mentality, it was it was never pleasant going into an RTA. And then I walked in and had been re as a service New South Wales. And there was a young man dressed in a suit who walked up and said, Jeremy, how can I help you? And, you know, that's really changed the customer experience at Service New South Wales. And Anthony has been working on initiatives to also bring that bring that level of service online. So I'll pass across to you, Anthony. Thank you, Jeremy. Thank you for the fantastic introduction. And let me take this opportunity to thank uh, our partner, sponsor CGU, and also the Blacktown City Council for inviting us, uh, Service New South Wales, to actually showcase what and how we can support small business owners. Uh, as I mentioned, I've been with the with Service New South Wales since 2016. So my goal today is to make all small businesses, our business owners, aware of what's available. And as Jeremy mentioned uh, previously, we do not want any businesses or business owners to fall between the crack and, and miss out on things that are available uh, for them uh, by grants or subsidies or waivers or anything like that. So my intention today is to invite all business owners if they have any questions or any uh, reason to believe that they are entitled to some fund or grant, please to visit Service New South Wales, they either log into our Service New South Wales webpage or call the 137788 number or even walk into a service centre uh, and uh, have a chat with one of our uh, staff there and they will then take you through uh, and record you through for the for the call back. Uh, what I'm going to do today is talk to you all about the business support that's available uh, in terms of the business concierge service. This service is a free business concierge service, so the customers don't have to pay anything. There's no charges involved. And the business concierge service will be there right through the whole journey of the business of the customer. Uh, it's a free service, as I mentioned, and you can access that either by calling the number uh, on the screen, 137788, or even uh, through the web page. 
The other thing I would love to talk to today as well is about the COVID safe business safety plan that's being rolled out uh, across New South Wales. There's a lot of information that's available on our web page, uh, which as we go through the presentation, I'll show you the links. Uh, and that is something that businesses should kind of start looking at, especially if you're in the cafe, restaurant and small bar sector. Uh, start looking into it and make sure things are uh, up and running and safe uh, for the businesses and also for customers. I'll touch a little bit on the financial support that's available. Jeremy did uh, go through a few things. I just want to make sure that businesses are aware of what's available and how they can uh, get access to the grants that's available. And again, if they have any um, queries in relation to uh, finding out whether are they entitled to it, you can uh, call us or speak to a business concierge and they can uh, provide you with those answers. Uh, there's a lot of other business support that's available as well through different agencies, for example, especially for uh, uh, if there's any mediation issues, uh, dispute resolution, there's a, uh, there's a lot of uh, services that are available, again, free uh, services and uh, help that's available. So I just want to make sure that businesses are aware of this and how they can actually approach the, the agency then and get that support that's available. Uh, there's the tax-free and uh, relief that's available from Revenue New South Wales, a free fee waivers that are available. So I would also touch a little bit on that uh, and provide you with some information and links that are available uh, so businesses can make use of what's uh, entitled and what they can do, uh, get out of the fee waivers uh, during this, these times. And lastly, the most important thing, I suppose, is the mental health support that's available. Uh, we all are going through uh, our businesses on business owners. They're going through a lot of uh, hard times, uh, a lot of struggle. So we just want to make sure, uh, say the, the government wants to make sure that everybody gets that support that's needed. One thing I would love to call out is please don't ask, uh, sit back and uh, not reach out. Uh, there's nothing you know should be holding you back. If you feel that you know stressed, you need that help. Please uh, reach out. There's a lot of help out there. It's not only for the business owners. It's also for your staff uh, to make sure that you do have a healthy workplace. So the first thing and the most important uh, support that's available, and as I mentioned, uh, is the business concierge service uh, that's available out there. If the free service. Uh, People can sign up for the service, and actually today I have a couple of my actually who have dialed in uh, to this webinar to get a feel uh, of how things are and uh, any questions that businesses may have. They 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 are going to take on board as well, so they can be, be prepared to uh, provide you with answers. The business concierge can actually assist you with. Uh, they will kind of understand, try and understand from you what is it that you need. So, understand the, the, the blue sky or the big picture, and then find out uh, what's available out there to make sure that they, the business owners get the right information and get the right information from one, one particular spot rather than them dialing into different uh, pages or logging into different agencies to see what's available. So the business concierge will understand what's required by talking to you. Uh, Find out what's available, uh, apply for the, uh, help the customers, help uh, apply for the grants or any other fees uh, that are available. Provide information about licenses, registrations, and any waivers that's available out there. Make sure that they understand that they can get access to these things. And also connect you to the free local business advisors. And I will leave uh, Graham to talk about the advisory part of it because one thing we want to make sure uh, that everyone, uh, the customers out there understand that the business concierge service that we offer is mainly a guidance uh, uh, service or providing guidance with what's out there. We do not provide uh, advice. We are not qualified advisors. That's where Business Connect and Graham uh, and his team will come up on board with that. Uh, the other thing I would also love to talk about is the, the, the grants that's available, the $3,000 grant that was available, is uh, available now, uh, has been extended uh, up to the 16th of August. So people, those businesses that have not yet applied for it, uh, just make sure that you do apply for that. Uh, and 
Don't miss out. Don't miss out on the three thousand uh, dollar that's available out there. I know there's this uh, qualifications and requirements that's needed for that, but uh, there's nothing like talking to a business concierge or talking to business command uh, to make sure that uh, you can get access to the the three thousand dollar that's available. The a lot of questions have been asked of how long would it take uh, for businesses to get that money back once they apply for it, uh, and the answer. Uh, is provided all the information uh, is there and it's been lodged and uh, lodged and approved by the process it will take about 10 days before the money hits your account so that's provided all the required documentation and you qualify for that uh, as uh, jeremy mentioned there's uh, some eligibility requirements for that you need to have an abn as of first of march 2020 uh, our wage uh, uh, Sorry, so the payroll threshold of 900,000, less uh, 20 staff or less, uh, and including for uh, a sole trader. Uh, that, that was one of the issues we had previously, where there was a sole trader and they did not qualify for whatever reason. But for the three so three thousand uh, dollar grant that's been taken off, and it makes it much more easier for a sole trader to get access to that uh, three thousand dollar grant as well. There's a lot of requirements and all these things are on our page. So as long as the customers are aware of it and prepare and make sure they have all that information before they apply for it, uh, there shouldn't be an issue of it being rejected or uh, it bouncing back. So just be aware, go to our web page, understand the requirements. And if you have any questions, please reach out to uh, our business concierge who can then take you through that and make sure that you fully understand exactly what's available and how these things can be applied for. Now, <clears throat> Jeremy mentioned, what can you use the money for? I mean, this is basically to, to make changes, to kind of uh, get your business to, to be COVID safe, to the extra expense that may be needed to, uh, to, to get back into business, uh, whether it's buying uh, cleaning products or changing, buying, uh, whatever it needs to do, whatever the business needs to do to have the self, the distancing requirements or whatever it needs. And all this money can be used for that. And it, please be aware that you cannot use this money to pay off a debt or anything like that. It should be used basically to make, to recover from the COVID by helping you with the extra expense that the businesses may need. Okay. Uh, how can you apply for it? You can visit Service New South Wales website. Call up on 137788. I'll take you through and register you uh, for the for the application process. The other thing I would like to talk to you about today is the recovery boost program. Uh, the fifty thousand being offered to individuals and organisations uh, is a great for a positive change. It's it's a great expression, you know, where the government is willing to help small businesses. The the, the funding actually opened on the 25th of June. The, the, the second round of the credit was the 50,000 uh, opened on the 25th of June, and, it, and it's available now. Now, to be eligible, of course, again, you need to have an ABN and an ACN, and also be able to demonstrate uh, the capacity to deliver projects uh, and just at least one funding principle and one funding category, uh, which you can actually find. Uh, on our web page, uh, and also uh, calling uh, and registering with us uh, with the business concierge, you can get all the information that you need in relation to uh, to that program. Uh, the export export assistance grant is something else that businesses, uh, if you are in that field, uh, make sure that you uh, are aware of that uh, and, and how you can actually. Uh, Get, get access to these the, the money that's available out there. So uh, please visit our webpage. Please have a chat with uh, the business concierge uh, to see how it is. The eligibility criteria at the moment is being defined. They haven't confirmed that yet, but once it's available, it will be made available on our webpage. And from what I understand, the amount that's going to be or will be made available is uh, like is a dollar for dollar. In, in other words, that if you are ready to invest ten thousand dollars, the government will be providing you with the assistance of ten thousand dollars. It's dollar for dollar assistance that's that's going to be made available. 
So please keep uh, a lookout for that. Uh, check our web pages or, or even give us a call. And uh, if you do hear of anything to say that, yeah, the grants are available, available now, please give us a call and we can confirm. Uh, and also you can check the eligibility on our web page. Okay, the other available uh, assistance that's available is the New South Wales, uh, the, the government payroll tax relief. As you can see, there's, uh, there's a lot of uh, funds available out there. The, and again, the, the, the tax deferral program is up and running. The link to that is through our webpage, Service New South Wales webpage, there's a link there. Uh, and if any, any business owners need to uh, get access to that, please do visit us uh, on, on our page and, and, and access that through the link that's available. Uh, as part of the six month deferral, the due date for returns uh, relating to July, August and September has been extended. So those of you who are uh, thinking that you've got to do those things now, that has been extended to the 30th of October. Uh, the other thing that's available also customers who have totally grouped Australian wage tax of 10 million or less will be entitled to a 25% reduction on their tax liabilities for the, 20, for the 2020 tax liability. So please just make sure that you visit the revenue website, which is also on our webpage to understand the benefits of uh, what's available out there. Uh, fee waivers, there's uh, a lot of information on fee waivers, uh, and that's the state government uh, fee waiver, uh, especially for businesses that do have, uh, especially if, uh, if you're a sole trader or a builder or has got a white card or whatever it may be, there's a lot of fees that have been waived during this period. So please, please make sure that you do access that information from either Service New South Wales or the uh, fair trading web page, you, you, you can have a look at it. And again, <clears throat> I just want to make sure that you do ring us if you if you have a question or visit our page uh, to understand what's out there for business owners. Uh, the licenses, the liquor and gaming licenses are uh, for businesses or for a restaurant or cafe owner uh, who's got a, a liquor license. There's some fee waivers there as well. So please make sure that, uh, and I believe they are automatically waived when you uh, renew your uh, liquor license. But uh, if you have any doubt about it, please, or uh, any questions about it, the liquor and gaming web page or Service New South Wales page, and we can help you with that as well. Uh, there's a few other information for the, those industries, especially with paintball, tattoo parlors, uh, home building, contract license, as I mentioned, uh, the white card holders, the motor vehicle repairers. Uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, was in, involved for a lot of businesses and to get an understanding of uh, all those businesses that can act, get access to these fees to be waived, please visit Service New South Wales or give us a call and we can help you there as well. Uh, again, as I mentioned, safe work, there's a little list of them. I don't want to go through all of them, but please, uh, any businesses out there, if you need help, uh, just make sure that uh, you visit our page or give us a call. And as Jeremy mentioned, the ATO support that's available, there's a lot of information available. Please make sure that you do access this. And again, uh, while you're speaking to business consult, if you are speaking to business consult, they can help you through that as well. Okay, the tax payment deferral, the ATO, as Jeremy mentioned, we do have, there's a lot of benefit out there. And uh, one of the most important things we wanna make sure of is that none of the businesses actually fall between the cracks and, and miss out on these things. So please be aware of this. Uh, the links are out there on, again, through Service New South Wales uh, page, or give us a call. Uh, we can take you through that as well. So Anthony, I might just, but in there to suggest that for all business owners, when it comes to creditors and the ATO is really just another creditor for your business, it's really important to be proactive. And when you speak to people ahead of the time in which they're expecting payments, they tend to be very reasonable in working out payment plans. And the ATO are actually amazing in terms of, I've always found them to be, to be very helpful and to offer options when, when you know, business, it's easy for businesses to get behind. 
So be on the front front foot, don't leave it until you're behind already. And I've seen that they'll work with you because they want to see your business survive. Absolutely. Thanks, Jeremy. And, and again, I second that. Uh, it, they, they are so helpful. They, like Jeremy mentioned, they want to make sure that nobody is left behind and all, all the help is available there. And again, there are links available through our page. I keep repeating that again and again. Service New South Wales will have all these links just to make sure that nobody misses out. Okay. Uh, so what's what what about what assistance is available? Uh, the one thing that's being rolled out now from New South Wales is to ensure that businesses have the uh, a safety plan in place. So uh, and by the way you do it is you go through the Service New South Wales page. You can go through a, and and do a an online uh, kind of I would say the test is a checklist of what's what needs to be done. And once that is done and you go through and understand the requirements, the, whether it be the distancing or, uh, or to keep uh, the areas clean, once that is done, you will be registered as a COVID safe business. Once the registration is done, uh, you can actually get access to some uh, stickers and leaflets and all that, which you can display uh, at your premises. So uh, people who are going to come in uh, will have the confidence that they are walking into a business that is COVID safe. There are certain things that are in the pipeline as well in terms of registering customers that is being trialed out at the moment, whether it be through the QR code or uh, writing uh, the listing the names of customers that are coming through. It is being uh, developed at the moment and going to be rolled out very soon. So please keep an eye out for it depending on your choice of how you would love to uh, record the information, uh, the benefits, uh, uh, whichever way the business choose, please uh, check our web page or the New South Wales uh, health page, uh, and you get much more, a lot more information on how and what you should do uh, down the track. Okay, the Small Business Commissioner's Office. Uh, one of the things that small business owners tenants and landlords as well are going through is, is the uh, the difficult times where people, the rental, the tenancy agreements, uh, rent reduction uh, uh, and all those kind of things. That, that's unfortunate part of this whole uh, situation now. So what we want to know, let businesses know are that there is help available. There's mediation and dispute resolution that's available. Uh, free of charge through the Office of Small Business Commissioner. Uh, the landlord or the tenant, they can actually access that. They can get free advice. And you can do that either by uh, logging into their page, which is smallbusiness.nsw.gov.au, or even through the Business Service New South Wales page. If you are, uh, if you have been registered or you are registering now, just uh, refer that to your the business concierge and they can actually put it through to the Office of the Small Business Commissioner for that help. Okay, uh, by regional, this is something that may not be of importance within this LGA, but there will be businesses who are uh, kind of uh, might be encouraged to do this, is, is the by regional campaign. And that is something that we need to be, and councils will also be aware of, is encouraging people to buy directly from uh, businesses that are that, that have been impacted by bushfire or the COVID, and uh, a lot of information is available. You can register for that at so, uh, um, the New South Wales webpage, uh, and you can have access to businesses that are within our area, uh, within the regional campaign, regional area, to to help them, help them get over what they've been through uh, again through the drought, bushfire, and now COVID. So. Please have a look at that, and if businesses can register or uh, help the other businesses in any way, please please make sure that uh, you can do that. Uh, and that's also something that Service New South Wales is promoting through uh, every council that we work with. Uh, and it's, and it's, a, it's a great great initiative for for businesses that are struggling at the moment. New South Wales first, first program. That's an, an important one as well. Okay, uh, 
So, uh, sorry, I've just kind of lost my train of thought there. The other, the industry, no, that's okay. Thanks, Jeremy. Uh, the new others, that's fine. Now, the industry capability network, uh, the, the key focus for, is to, sorry, I've just got a, the key focus is to introduce new software suppliers uh, into opportunities that are there. These are often major projects, but many of these inquiries received just have to sort. They find it hard to source what information that's available. And I suppose there are consultants that are available uh, at the broad industry who have the experience and the, uh, the broader experience uh, and industry specific uh, that they can monitor and assist. Uh, this information again uh, is available for this page that on the web page and also uh, the the link that is here. So those of you who need to access this and need some information, please reach out. We are happy to uh, pass on that information uh, or, or, or send you the link. Uh, the business concierge can send you the link for that. So while I'm talking, I just had a question in in the chat. So is the closing date for the recovery boost program? is the 16th of August uh, and not 6th of August, the 16th of August. Okay, so the most important thing for the business concierge perspective is how do you get access to the business concierge? It's pretty, pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Uh, and as Jeremy just put up on the screen, uh, the business owners can register by just a question of filling in about six boxes. Uh, and also giving them a time and date when you would like the business concierge to call you. And they will ring you uh, at the time nominated. You can register for that. And they will then take you through what's available and what you, uh, the business owner needs in terms of help. And again, as I mentioned, it's a free service and there's no time limit as to how long uh, you can be on that uh, with our help with the business concierge. It is totally up to you with the business owner when you are happy with the support that you have received and if you think that's all you need you can then close the case but the business concierge is there to help you right through the whole journey so jeremy mentioned i'll i'll hang around after this to take any calls that oh sorry not calls any questions that you may have uh but and i'll pass it on back to jeremy Brilliant. Thank you, Anthony. And uh, that's that's a great overview. There's, uh, I think uh, it's amazing the amount of help that's out there when you know where to look. And, you know, one of the traits of small business owners, successful small business owners, is they're never too proud to ask for help. It's amazing what comes when we ask the question, you know, I was, one, I was wondering if you could help me. So I highly recommend um, Service New South Wales on this front. And I'm really excited now to bring in Graham Fitzpatrick, who's uh, our local service provider through Business Connect at the Western Sydney Business Centre. And he does some amazing work in uh, supporting, supporting local businesses. So Graham, I was wondering if you'd tell people a bit more about some of the work you do. Yeah, thanks, Jeremy. And um, thanks to Anthony too for the bit of a plug on Business Connect as well. Um, I've been with the Western Sydney Business Centre as the local Blacktown business advisor now for going on three years. Um, the easiest way for me to put it to everybody is, you know, the reason why you jumped in and started your own business, okay? Um, very much what we do at Business Connect is we very much help you with the how, okay? And it's a personalised, dedicated, one-on-one -on -one program um, to help you um, with whatever aspects of the business um, that you're looking at that you need some, some attention and some help basically with. Um, so um, we we love business plans, um, as Jeremy was alluding to before. Um, so those those business plans, we can help you with your business plan. You know, we can actually help you in terms of you know things like the SWOT analysis, in terms of taking some of those um, weaknesses and some of those threats and turn them into opportunities for for the businesses and and turn them into strengths basically as well. Um, we can also help you review your business model, um, understand your cash flow. Um, look at marketing strategies, and it's more important than ever before to look at your marketing strategies as we come out of the recovery process as it continues with, with COVID. And that's just not your marketing strategy in terms of what you're doing um, online, which of course is important, but what opportunities are out there existing in traditional media forms as well that may get you know um, you to be able to get out there and promote your, your point of difference as such. 
Um, we've been doing a lot of work lately in with the COVID-19 assistance and working hand in hand to a certain degree with Services New South Wales. Um, we'll actually refer people to Services New South Wales if they need assistance, we're applying for some of those grants and, and assistance basically as well. Um, we're also working through things like helping you with your COVID risk assessments um, and those safety plans. You know, you can have a safety plan, but how do you actually implement those safety plans into your business um, to not only protect your customers, but also it's about protecting your staff as well. So we can definitely help you in, in those areas as well. Um, we can also help give you advice and help you navigate um, the various government grant, other government grants that exist but outside of the COVID, COVID support. Um, help you with, with tenders and procurement processes, especially for, for government um, tenders and procurement basically as well. Um, we also run a number of different things as well as um, we can do a, a health check, a full diagnostic on your business or a diagnostic on different aspects of the business. It's really simple. It's just a question and answer type document and you ask to answer a series of yes and no questions. And we come back and give you a report that says these are the things that are going well in the business and here's some areas that need some attention that we can then both work together um, to set some actions in place. Plus, we've got regular um, online webinars at the moment, um, various workshops from everything from SEO right through to things like business planning, um, COVID um, recovery process and that sort of stuff. So Western Sydney Business Centre is very much here to help um, and it's here to help you, the business owner, um, get things back on track to a certain degree um, from, from all the disruption with COVID, but also to help you grow your business. We, we, we also work with intenders and startups um, to move that idea um, forward, um, get it to minimum viable product, and then also to get it out there and start building relationships and partnerships to grow the business further. Um, so again, love to thank um, Jeremy, um, as well as um, Services New South Wales and Anthony, um, Blacktown Council as well, um, for allowing us to, to be involved in today and have a chat. And like Anthony, I'll hang around a little bit um, as well. Um, I've just posted a link um, on the uh, chat um, that's a direct link to me. So if you jump on that link, it'll come through to me and then I'll organise um, a, a day and a time for us to chat. Um, it's 60 hours in total for the program. Um, the first four hours is basically free, then it's a subsidised rate after that. However, if your business has been directly affected by COVID and you're in financial um, distress, um, we can organise some additional hours of free advice to help um, get you back on track. Um, so if there's any questions, I'm happy to hang around um, or I'll set my details on the screen. Thanks, Jeremy. Fantastic. Thanks so much, Graham. And if people aren't able to travel, can you also do these sessions remotely? In fact, we're doing most stuff remotely at the moment. I'm starting to get back out there into the real world. Um, but yeah, look, phone or Zoom video chats, whatever is easiest for them. Um, or they can come into the centre and um, we can utilise the, the space within social distancing guidelines in the centre. So, yeah, all good. Fantastic. Thank you, Graham. So, where is this going to end? Here's the thing. Don't trust what you read in the papers. Nobody really knows. And, uh, you know, if it's not COVID-19, it could be something else. And the important thing as business owners is that we re remain focused on really what are the most critical things. How do we protect our cash flow? How do we get clear on where our business needs to get to, not just to survive, but to get ahead? Who are the people that we need to surround ourselves with? to help us keep a positive mindset and to overcome some of the challenges that are inevitably coming our way. One of the things I guarantee about being in small business is, is, it a, is a roller coaster. Yeah, there's the days where you go down and then there's the days where we have ups. Um, so there is also a telephone hotline for small businesses that have been impacted by COVID-19. Please let me encourage you, if you are struggling, reach out, just call someone, call anyone and ask for a little bit of help. And I think you'll be surprised how quickly things can turn around. The challenge in business is sometimes we can't see the trees for the forest. We're just up too close. So having someone with a little bit of perspective can very quickly help us get back into that resourceful state to make the right decisions to take our business forward. If you want to stay up to date with what's happening um, with coronavirus, there's some new apps that have been released on WhatsApp and um, also the um, Apple Store and Google Play. Uh, so those are some ways that we can keep up to date. Part of helping your business grow and move forward, I mentioned about the Business Success Program. This is a series of 13 different workshops, um, each run for about three hours. They're designed to be in-person workshops. So due to COVID-19, we've had to push back the date a little bit, and we've also had to limit the numbers. 
So there'll be a maximum of 20 people in each one of these workshops. And it's designed for us to not just give you information, but also help you work through it and put it into play. So thanks to the support by Blacktown Council and CGU, these workshops are only $25 a piece. Um, so starting on the 1st of September, we've got one on business planning and growth. Um, on the 8th of September, there's one for the larger businesses. You know, you've got to a million. That's the hardest, hardest task you'll ever do as a business owner. What do we do beyond that? How do we get it to two, three or five million? If you're, no, if you're thinking about starting a new business or you know someone who's interested in starting a side hustle, tell them about the getting started in your new business workshop on the 21st of September. And you can see there's also workshops there on selling, on tender and grant writing, on some management skills, recruiting and understanding people. And also on the 8th of October, that workshop I mentioned all about business financial mastery. So I'll just put in the chat on the right hand side, the link to the feedback survey. We'd really appreciate if you could take a couple of minutes to give us your feedback from today. And for everyone who does that, we'll send you out a PDF um, of all of the slides from today, as well as a template for a business plan. And um, hopefully those will be some helpful resources for you. And also don't be afraid to put in there if you'd like a one-to-one -one with myself, with Graham, or to ask some more questions of Anthony, please put that in that feedback survey as well. I've also put um, Anthony and Graham's uh, email addresses up on the screen. So feel free to reach out and ask for help. So in closing, people often say information is power, but I would say information is not power. Information becomes powerful when we take action on it. So before you leave the webinar and go back to your busy lives, take some time perhaps to recap what we covered today, to really prioritize what are the couple of things that you're going to put into action. If it's one of those recovery grants, let's put a time in your diary where you're gonna physically sit down and do it. You see, when we put information into action, that's when we get our businesses moving forward. That's when we become more successful. I'd like to thank you also for spending your most important resource, your time with us today so we could share with you a few more ideas how we can get our businesses set for S September and beyond and make sure that you have strong, resilient businesses moving forward.